This is Todd, and I'm just leaving for an overnight trip on the Alaska Wilderness Chugach National For Chugach State Park, I should say. And um, yeah, I'm gonna do an overnight backpacking trip solo in the Alaskan Wilderness. Todd out. This is Todd in the Alaskan Wilderness in the Chugach wilderness and I'm looking at cow parsnip it's got the seed heads which can be white there's one over there it's got these big leaves and the thing about cow parsnip apparently is that it can irritate the skin and cause your skin to lose its protection against the sun I don't know how that works, but something to avoid, and it seems to grow uh, quite a bit here, so I'm going to be very careful about contacting it. Todd out. This is Todd at Lake Willowa. Very scenic lake set up in the mountains. here with the mountain goats. I'm gonna have to survive the night. I'll let you know how that comes out. Todd out. This is Todd in the Chugach wilderness. I'm in a valley and I'm looking around for a place that I could use in a survival situation to spend the night stuck somewhere like this. Now one factor is that cold air sinks, so at the bottom of a valley it's going to be a little colder. But you need to be out of the wind. So I'm looking around. campsites some place like this a little sheltered ravine would make a lot of sense it's out of the wind it's not too low you don't want to be higher up either because you're too exposed too much wind. So what would seem to make the most sense is a sheltered area somewhere in the middle. Not too high, not too low. Let me pick a spot and I'll get back to you. This is Todd out. I think I found a good shelter spot. It's tucked away underneath this ridge. It's got some overhead cover with this, these evergreens. I do have a tarp I'm going to use. And string that up using these bushes but that seems like a good place to lie down right there so that's going to be my bed for the night Todd out this is Todd I am looking at cotton grass and it cotton grass has these fluffy heads that resemble cotton and that stuff is likely going to make good flash tinder. It could also be used to as insulation if you stuffed it inside your clothing. So I'm going to take some of that cotton grass 
we're starting a fire. Cotton grass. Okay, so I'm seeing these evergreen bushes that have these purple cones. And these purple cones are oozing sap. Like that there. That gave me an idea for making fire. And I'm gonna try it with some of that cotton grass. So let's go try it. Okay, I've set up this cotton grass and I've collected some sap from about a half a dozen of those cones. And I've got it set up so that hopefully with one strike of the fire steel, will get us a little fire going. Hopefully the sap will make it burn long enough to light up these dried pine cones. So what we have here is flash tinder. The sap would be uh, an accelerant. And then these pine cones would be your kindling. So the goal is to get the kindling to burn. And then we can add more kindling and get us a fire going. So let's give it a shot. <clears throat> I don't think we got the sap burning. That's the nature of flash tinder. It burns pretty quickly. So let's fluff it out some more and see if we can get it going again. Okay, we got it going again, but it didn't light the sap. Give it another shot. We're rubbing some of that fluff into the sap and see if we can't get it lit. Well, it's easy enough to light the flash tender, but as you can see, it's a trick to get flash tender to work with anything. It definitely helps. I've, I've done it. Got a bunch of uh, fluff from dandelions and you got to mix stuff in with it because that flash tender will just burn so quickly. And unless you mix stuff in there with it, it's just not going to last long enough to do anything, so that is the trick. Let's try something here. Trying to mix some of the sap in with the cotton grass fluff. The idea being to get the sap lit. Let's try her again. Didn't work almost, but get the idea. 
persistence pays off. But I think um, I think I got to try a different approach with this cotton grass. I mean, it's obviously a great flash tender. It's just finding the right combination of materials to make it work and get a fire gun. So I'll have to try something else. Tie it out for now. Okay, I'm gonna give it another shot with the flash tender. I've got a piece of birch bark. This is paper birch. Which is common in Alaska or anywhere in the north. So let's use that. And you want to use the. Um, I've seen them make scrapings. But I haven't had much success with that. So what I'm going to do. Is just take some of the finest layers of the birch bark, just real thin outer layers, and break that up because that's what you want to get ignition. Get a bunch of that, and then mix in a little less fine because we want that to ignite. Once the fine stuff ignites, and ultimately get the rest of this bark ignited. I'll take a little bit of heat. This isn't the finest stuff, but it's a little thicker, so hopefully that'll ignite for a hotter flame. Then we'll throw some of our flash tinder in there, but you gotta mix it in. Mix it in with the flash tinder. Flash tinder will just get it get a flame and then we want it to ignite this birch bark. You can throw other stuff like grasses or any other good tinder material, but Kinda of gotta be mixed in with the flash tinder. And once we get flame, we can hopefully ignite the sides of that birch there. flash tender but you get the idea you mix it in with other stuff that'll burn hotter and then this birch bark has a lot of oil in it it will burn hot and long and then you get some other tinder on there to make your fire real quick as soon as you have flame and that's the way you use flash tender Alaskan style because I'm using materials that I found in Alaska. That 
that's it. Taught out. This is Todd, and I'm gonna do a quick inventory of my survival items that I chose to bring to Alaska for an overnight adventure in the mountains of the Chugach Wilderness. And so I've got my water filtration system and containers to carry the water. Got a Petzl headlamp. I've got a Silky Pocket Boy saw, a orange more companion knife. I've got my first aid kit with other survival essentials like water purification tablets, mirror, duct tape, safety pins, plus all the other first aid items, cotton bandages, etc. Got my rigging bag with various hanks of cordage. I've got my Bic lighter and a Swedish fire steel. And here is the US military, US Army issue M1 hiking stick. Gotta have that. <sighs> got my pack, compass. Sleep system. I've got this piece of Reflectix as my ground pad. That's for uh, heating and air systems. I just cut out a piece. It's cheap, very effective. I've got a bivy bag with a down sleeping bag rated for 30 degrees. Uh, space blanket. Tarp. And rig that over me in case it rains. And a large plastic heavy duty trash bag to keep everything dry. My clothing system is layered. I have fleece top and bottom, uh, polypropylene top and bottom as my base layer, and my hiking pants. And a rain jacket, rain wind jacket. <clears throat> There's mosquitoes out here. Um, dry bag. And that, oh, sunblock. Um, that is pretty much it. Um, extra socks for hiking. Gotta have dry feet when you go to bed. And that's my survival system. Tied out. So I made it through the night. Didn't get eaten by a bear. Um, it's 5.30 in the morning and it's light already. These Alaskan nights aren't very long, they're about six hours. Which makes it uh, kind of interesting because the sun doesn't go down till 10.30 at night and it kind of keeps it warmer. It's probably about 50 degrees right now. I heard, uh, I'm hearing uh, ptarmigan, they're kind of quacking like ducks, they make these interesting sounds. But I slept okay. Here I am next to this stream, it's running off the lake. And here's my setup, I've got that tarp Rigged up with a ridge line. Didn't rain last night, but kept condensation off me, and you never know when it's going to rain in the mountains. So 
You need to have cover. Take my bivy bag underneath it. I found a uh, plant called yarrow, Y-A-R-R-O-W. Uh, this grows everywhere up here. I don't see it in the southeast until I get way up in the mountains of North Carolina. But this is a very useful medicinal plant. Its Latin name is Achillea millifolium. And even in ancient times, they were using it to stop the flow of blood when you have a wound. Uh, millifolium refers to the leaf. And so that's a good plant to know. Yarrow. So I'm at the end of my epic adventure in the Chugach, Chugach wilderness near Anchorage, Alaska. And this is a quick recap of the trip. Lessons learned. There are uh, long days here, so when the sun's out, it's not cold. Uh, I was not at an extreme altitude where I camped. Uh, it didn't get too cold at night around about 50 degrees, maybe a little lower. Um, there's mosquitoes here. In fact, Alaskans refer to mosquitoes as their state bird. Um, but I was in a bivy bag with mesh over my face and so that didn't bother me all night, even though they were buzzing around. Um, beautiful country. Um, oh, the uh, cow parsnip is something to watch out for. It's got stinging hairs, kind of like stinging nettle. You want to avoid that. Um, that's about it. And uh, my Chugach adventure tied out. So what does it take to survive the Alaskan wilderness? Pretty much the same things that allow you to survive anywhere else. If uh, preparation is the key, if you're not prepared for the worst, you're just not prepared. So you have to be aware of the local conditions, the terrain, etc., and prepare for that. Um, you need to have the five C's, which is cutting tool, container, combustion device, cordage, and cover. Those things are things you should always have whenever you go into the wilderness. And then you can talk about the 10 C's, which are additional items that uh, deal with prevention or other extenuating circumstances. So uh, local knowledge is important. So uh, I learned a few things on this exercise about the local conditions in Alaska. And if I ever go out in the wilderness there again, that'll help me out. Um, terrain, knowledge of the terrain and conditions, uh, conditions, weather, uh, I was prepared for the ter terrain. I knew it was mountainous terrain. I knew that uh, the weather can change uh, in, in the mountains. So I was prepared for the worst conditions there. Um, the terrain, uh, although I did look at a map and I had a GPS app uh, with terrain features. Uh, I didn't look closely at the altitudes and the uh, altitude differences that I was going to be navigating, which 
Uh, that's something I need to get more familiar with and think about more the next time I go out. Um, but yeah, local, local knowledge, uh, plants, uh, and other, other things that can help you out in that local area. Uh, those are the things you need to know about. So those are my thoughts on surviving the Alaskan wilderness and Todd out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified of new videos, click the notification bell.